Hello, this is Eric Falk, and I am going to do a video about trust analysis. I noticed that lesson one, example five, just had a disproportionate amount of hits and views, and I figured that if people took a look at that trust type structure and were interested in it or maybe confused by it, I wanted to go ahead and shed a little light. So this <clears throat> is more of a, I guess you'd call it more of a roof trust, let's call it. And I'm going to go ahead and figure this out. We're going to start by just giving some backdrop to trust design. <clears throat> this is a coplanar trust, meaning it's only in two dimensions. You can have three dimension stuff, you know, if you had a, a let's say, a bridge. This is a really simple truss. You have a bridge. Um, And this has notice has this this is two trusses. Sorry, that's a terrible drawing. And uh, so that's a bridge. Hopefully, <laughs> you understand what I was drawing. But that would be oh, never mind. That would be two coplanar trusses. So you'd have this truss right here. And then this truss right here. And that simplifies design a lot. You can you can. Uh, make it a three-dimensional truss but that it just makes uh, math a little bit more difficult so we're talking about a coplanar meaning 2d truss we're looking at in two dimensions we're looking at x and y we're not going into a z because it's in, within the x and y plane all right and then we're also talking about so i'm gonna go ahead and write that is coplanar these are a's Oops coplanar truss and it is also a simple truss and a simple truss is just made up of triangles that's the easiest shape that is structurally sound or not it's structurally stable would be a better word so a simple truss is triangles and only triangles now you can if you put two of these together and for say you do some crazy things and then it can be a, a simple or complex it moves to a complex or a there's three different type of trusses a simple a compound is when you put two symbols together and then a complex which is even more difficult the fact is that we're gonna we're gonna stick with this simple truss for right now you will probably not see the other two and it's a little bit more difficult all right and when you're doing truss design there's two real big assumptions you want to make first one is that all of these joints are pins. These are all pins. Every last one of them is a pin, which is what you want to do in truss design. Uh, what that does is it makes these these members are either in compression or tension, and that's it. They're all axial, compression or tension. And axial means that it's a it's going down to axle x. Sorry the axis of your member. So axial is either compression or tension. And then the second assumption is that the applied loads, or I mean the loads are applied at the joints and only the joints. So yes, in real trusses, this member weighs something. You know, you're gonna have a weight on it. But in all, uh, for all intents and purposes, you you just take that weight and you put you divide it ev evenly into each joint. So you load in truss analysis, you load the truss through the joints only, and that also allows for only tension and compression. And we're going to go ahead and begin breaking down this this uh, first uh, this problem. First thing you want to do is solve for your reactions. But when you look at it, it's not horribly clear. I didn't even put any distances on here. Let's throw some distances. Let's make those in green. All right, the distances, what we know. Let's say this right here. Let's say 10 foot, 10 foot, and 10 foot. And that's what you know. So you have to figure out everything else. You also have these angles. But everything else, good luck. What we want to go in and do is figure out some distances. Well, everybody knows that triangles have 180 degrees in a triangle. So 180 minus, minus 60 minus 30 is 90. So we know this is a right triangle. 
and that's your right, and this means 90 degrees, by the way. Uh, and if this is a straight line, this is also 90 degrees. That's trigonometry, and if you're having issues with that, go to the Khan Academy site, and he'll clear up all the issues with your trigonometry. All right, we also know 180 degrees is a straight line. Uh, I think compound, complex, I forget what it is. Anyways, 180 minus 60 minus 60 is 60. So you know that. This is a uh, symmetrical, so we know this one's 60 as well. Everything that happens to this side is going to happen to this side. It's also loaded symmetrically, so it should end up being a symmetrical truss, loads and everything. So 60, 60, let's look up here. that We know 60 minus 60 minus 60 for this triangle is also 60. Um, 180 minus 90 minus 60 is 30. And then same thing over here is 30. There we go. Is that everything? I believe that's all the angles. So we now have all the angles. Uh, what else will you need? Well, first we're going to do a shear and moment diagram on this, just to show you that it doesn't matter if it's a truss, it's still going to kind of act like a beam in your mind. It's still going to have the same type of properties, I guess. So what we want to find is to figure out, well, we need to find this distance. Let me change color real quick. We need to find this distance so we can figure out how far is, how far perpendicular right here is this this force so we can get the moment. So we need to figure out that and we also need to figure out the height of this of this right here. So let's go ahead and draw it in there so we at least have something to figure out. Alright. So I guess the first thing you need to figure out is the height. Let's figure out how high this point is right here. And we have the angle, and we have the, the distance here, so we should be good. We know it's halfway, so we could say... Let me think. And I'm going to draw this off to the side to make it a little bit more easier to understand. And when you draw it all out, well, this is going to be 15. Here, here's what we're looking at right here, is essentially the part we're looking at. And this is 15 foot, so we know it's halfway, because it's a symmetrical truss. And we also know that this is 30 degrees. And we want to find out how tall it is. So, uh, we have, we're, we're, we're missing this right here, which comes out to be tangent. And hopefully that's getting to be a little bit faster for you. So the tangent of 30 equals TOA opposite, which is opposite the angle, this is opposite the angle, this is adjacent to the angle, equals opposite over 15 foot. So it's 15 tan 30. And 15 tan 30 equals 8.66 feet. So this is 8.6, well, 6.7 foot, but we'll just say 6.6 six foot. No, actually, it's 6, 6 foot. 8.66 foot. And there we have that distance right there. Now let's also figure out, and this should be intuitive, well, hopefully it is, what this distance is. The distance from A, the, hor the vertical distance from A to B. It should be half of this right here. But let's go ahead and do the math just to make sure. I'm going to change the yellow. So it, here's your A point going up to B. We do not know that distance, we don't know that distance. So we do know 30 degrees. And let me think, what do we want to figure out here? Actually, off the top of my head, I, I don't see an easy way to get that, which there might be, but I'm not seeing it. So what I want to do is go ahead and figure these other triangles. Let's figure out the, the length of each of these, these, these members. We know this is 10 foot, and we know that that is now, we can make this the hypothesis, pi hypotenuse. So let's do this. This is A, this is C, and this is B. And that's what we're looking at. And this is your, this is 30, and this is 60. So we know all of them. And we also know 10. So we can figure out the other two using our trigonometric equations. And right now, let's say that we're going to 
get this distance right here. And that is going to be the cosine. It's going to be use the hypotenuse, which is 10 foot times the cosine of 30. That's what this distance will be, which is, which is also 8.66. How convenient. You're going to find out that a lot of these distances are the same. And we could know that one, but we'll do the math on that one later, just so you are 100% sure that this is also 8.66, but it is. You can see that it's actually the same triangle. So, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and say it's 8.66. Because you can see this triangle right here and this triangle are the same, kind of back-to-back. -back, which means this one is 8.66, and this leg is 8.66 foot. All right, and we know 10, 10, 10. All right, now we can go to this triangle right here. Which is 60. Actually, we could uh, we should have done this this leg first. And since it's the same triangle, it's going to be the same leg, just opposite. So that's going to be what the opposite is 10 foot sine of 30 equals 5 foot. So this is 5 foot. That means that this is this over here is 5 foot. And if that's 5 foot and that's 8.6 foot, then you know this one is actually going to be 10 foot. And this is going to be 10 foot. So now we've got just about everything. I, I don't think we've got all of our legs. The lengths dis are defined. We've got everything I can think of defined. Let's go ahead and define the height of of b which you know what it is it's half of 8.66 but we'll go ahead and do it anyways and i believe that's where we were we were right here so we have 30 now we have 8.66 which we didn't have before which makes this a lot easier and that's going to be what the sine of 30 this is so o opposite we'll call it x over the hypotenuse of 8.66 and that 8 point and it should be 4.33 if I believe yeah 8.66 sine 30 equals 4.33 we we're correct in our assumption so this height right here not really a great way to put this in I'm just gonna put it up here and hopefully you remember 4.33 4.33 foot. All right, now we've got everything you could possibly want to find. Actually, let's define one more thing. We've got a few minutes here. Let's define what what is this distance from this line to A. And it's going to be the cosine, 8.66 cosine 30, which is 4.33. Is that right? No, it's not right, because I put 8.6 8 as sine 30 again on accident. It's 8.66 cosine 30 equals 7.5. So this distance from here to here is 7.5 foot. And now we've got a very nice, well-defined structure. You know all the distances, you know all the angles, now you have to set up your free body diagram. Well, actually, yeah, go for your result. You have to find your reactions, and then you set up your free di body diagram, and then moment diagram, or shear diagram, then moment diagram. We're going to go ahead and stop the video at this point, and we'll pick up in a minute.